could just go to Pastor Jay and say, hey, when you say it's such and such, it made me feel like this. Well, baby, I'm going to try and say that. Bam, it's over. Oh, well, I just misunderstood. Well, see, you done blew it up. You done, you all just gone with it. And it wasn't even like that. And if it was like that, what did you do to contribute to it? Come on now. Let's just stay hype. Let's just stay hype. I just want to be hype. I want to be hype too. I consider myself radical for the Lord. But I want my heart to be clean. I want to be radically clean. Is that her? I just made one. I want to be radically clean. Don't give me some thoughts. I know you know all the real words. <laughs> She's smart. All right. So then his Lord, we're going to go to 32. Listen to this. This is really serious. 31. So when his fellow servants saw what was done, they were very sorry and came and told unto their Lord all that was done. Wait a minute. Listen to this. So when his fellow servants that was done, they were very sorry. Do you know when you're not in the right spirit, people around you see it? When you don't have the right spirit, people see it. You can prophesy, proper lie, whatever you want to do, but people take note to that. And once you ruin your character in the eyes of people, you can't get that back. Well, you say, I don't do it. I'm about to hit me with my children. <gasps> That's even worse. That person once loved Sister Butterbean. But now she thinks Sister Butterbean intentionally doing something to you. When righteously, you and Sister Butterbean should have just got that thing straight and the children should have never even heard that. So when his fellow servants saw what was done, they were very sorry and came and told unto the Lord all that that was done. And see, you going to tell what your offense is, somebody else going to tell the Lord. This stuff shouldn't even be going on, Lord. See, ain't nobody saying that to you. They ain't saying that to you, because see, you already out of control anyway. So they ain't going to say that to you, but they talking to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Do you see what's going on between Sister Butterbean and Sister Apple Pie? Lord, have mercy. And they began to grieve those people that's on the outside of the situation. Okay. And they came and told that Lord all that was done. Pick up from that somebody. Then what did he call him? So now nah, this is sticky. You once had the title of a saint. Now you being called wicked by the Lord. When you walk in unforgiveness, that is wicked. When you holding stuff in your heart against people, you might as well say, <coughs> go on, take a lot. Go on, do your time. So he called him a wicked servant. He said, I forgave thee all that debt because thou desired me. Just because you desired for me to forgive you, I did that. And his Lord was wroth. That means he was really angry and delivered him to the what? Tormentors. So you mean unforgiveness can take you to? That's the only place I know they torment people. Till he should pay all that was due unto him. So likewise shall my heavenly father do also unto you if ye from your hearts. See, we can't say it with our lips. You gotta do it from your heart. And a lot of times things have taken place between you and someone else, and you, with your mouth you feel like you've dealt with it, but in your heart you haven't really dealt with it. 
So we got to go in the depths of our heart and really deal with that thing. Because as I said, only the pure in heart shall see God. Somebody said, well, I don't get this message tonight. Maybe I should have been here. Oh, you should have been here. Because if you ain't dealing with this right now, something going to come up. Somebody going to push your button. Somebody going to step on your toe. Somebody going to rub you the wrong way. And you're going to be challenged. And you got to choose to forgive or not to forgive. This is the crowning sin that is plaguing the body of Christ. And if you haven't experienced this yet, wonderful. When it comes your time, do it the Bible way. Do it the Bible way. I've been called a busybody because when I have a problem with somebody, I go to them. You're just a busybody. You're starting up mess. The mess was already in you. I'm just trying to get to the bottom of it. But you want to call me a busybody. Let them call you what they want to call you. But you got to make sure your heart right because if your heart is not right, you won't be able to go and see the Lord. Not in peace. Because we all going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Ain't that right? All right. Let's go to Romans real quick. Romans chapter 14. Romans chapter 14 and let's start with verse 4 and it says who art thou that judges another man's servant to his own master he stand there or fallen yea he shall be holding up but God is able to make him stand we gotta learn how to pick our values that's how you stay married and that's how you keep good relationships, is by learning to pick your battles. What do you mean by that? If it's not worth addressing, leave it alone. If it ain't worth addressing, leave it alone. But if you're an analytical person and you just gotta deal with every single solitary thing, you're gonna be tearing up relationships everywhere you go. Pick your battles. It says, who are you to judge another man, sir? Because that's where a lot of confusion come in is because we're judging something that the other party is doing. Well, I don't think they should have done it this way. Well, who are you? That person got to stand before God for what they do. Right? Amen. If we don't have a prayer line, I want to finish this because this is serious. We got to really, really deal with this thing. And especially when, uh, when it comes to this stuff, pulpit stuff, the man of God got to give account to God for the souls. Let him give account for that stuff. Don't get in the flesh. Don't judge what your leaders do and judge them and pick apart what they do. They got to stand before God for what they do. You stay in the right spirit. Okay? So, it says in verse... Go to five. One man esteem it one day above another, another esteem it every day of life. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. A lot of times in the body of Christ, we're trying to get the person to believe exactly the way we believe, and because they don't, we fall out with them. So we tear up relationships because the person is not in the total same mind frame that we are in. Don't do that. Let everybody be persuaded in their own mind. And sometimes when you just leave the thing alone, go and have time to deal with that person. But if you keep nagging, 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 and just tear the relationship over something that you really should just leave alone. Amen. See, I want to talk this kind of stuff. I had to learn this the hard way. So if one person think this way and the other one think that way, if they got the Holy Ghost, if they think it the wrong way, they ain't going to think that way too much longer. You keep praying for what the Bible says. The effectual, fervent, proud, righteous man do what? Avail it much. 